Hey guys, uh, Zach from Chippewa Outdoors here, and uh, you know, as you've seen in our other videos, we like to show you guys hunting and trapping and fur handling, all that kind of stuff. But uh, if you've watched our channel intro, um, we say in there, you know, everything from hunting to trapping and everything in between. Well, this is uh, an in between part of our lives. We uh, we like the blacksmith, so. Uh, figured I'd make a video today for you guys and show you how to uh, do some blacksmithing. Um, I've been doing it now for, I don't know, two, three years now. I got a just a simple brake drum forge, uh, you know, cheap anvil and a uh, nice set of hammers. But, uh, you know, we like, to, we like to do blacksmithing. Anything from making simple hooks to, uh, you know, making knives. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, blacksmith a knife from uh, from a piece of blank steel to a uh, a finished finished product with a handle and a sheath on it. So what we're gonna do today is is this is a piece of uh, 125 thick, so eighth inch thick, 1070 uh, carbon steel, 70% carbon content. Um, whenever you're making knives. You want uh, you want high carbon steel. It'll uh, it hardens hardens really well, and uh, it'll keep an edge on it for you. So yeah, this is roughly nine inches long, and it's probably oh about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half tall. But uh, if you can see here, I got drawn out on here a uh, a knife blank. So what we're gonna do first is uh, we're gonna draw this uh, draw this blade out. What we'll do instead of cutting this off. We'll actually take and uh, smash it up into here and kind of stretch that blade out. I don't know, maybe another half inch. We'll stretch it out, um, do that, and then we'll work our way to the handle here. Um, the handle it, it'll be a little a little short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna this will be the edge of the blade here. I'm gonna step this up and uh, just make a nice swooping handle here, and uh, we'll probably draw this out probably another inch or so. And uh, we'll most likely use, uh, I don't know, probably cherry or oak or, you know, some type of handle there. But uh, I'll show you guys how to do that, and then uh, I'll just talk to you guys a little bit between the video. But uh, I'm just going to let the video run, and, uh, you know, you guys can watch how, uh, watch how uh, to make a knife. So, And maybe at the end of the video, if, uh, if I'm willing, I might say this knife's for sale, so... I don't know. We'll see. If you guys really want a knife, you know, we might put it up for sale for you guys. So, all right, here we go. We're gonna start it. All right, guys. Uh, for this 1070 steel, um, to be able to easily uh, work it, it needs to be right about 1600, 1650 degrees. Um, I like to get it a little hotter. It just makes you know the metal moves a lot easier, you know, under the hammer. But uh, about 1600 degrees it'll move pretty good um, and then at the end of the video we'll uh, we'll quench it in oil and uh, I'll explain that to you guys but uh, you got to take the blade and bring it up to a, uh, a critical temperature where the uh, where the steel goes non-magnetic and uh, that's whenever you quench it now 1070 you can uh, either oil or water quench it to harden it I like oil quenching it um, all right, that's just what I do. I just oil quench everything. So, all right. So we're gonna brush that, brush that scale off, and we're gonna start to. Uh, that metal getting I mean it's still a little hot there but uh, you don't want to work your metal cold all right guys you see there we got our we got our arch of our blade started there um, so we're keeping it the same thickness for right now um, whenever I what I'll do is I'll, I'll take and uh, 
hit this with the hammer and add like a, a striking motion and uh, actually draw draw that edge into it so you don't have to you don't have to grind it into there um, you can grind it I suppose but uh, I like drawing it out it's more you know it's more blacksmithy I guess Alright, what I did there was I measured out on my anvil how long I wanted that blade to be. Um, made a mark, got it hot, set it down on the anvil, made me another mark so I knew where it was on the steel. And I took this and set this um, over the edge of the anvil and I just took one hit and put it in there. And what that will do right there for me is it will mark out where the blade stops and the, and the handle starts. So uh, now we're just going to take and just start stretching this out. I, I kind of like it. I kind of want it to curve down, but we'll see how it works out. Gonna switch to a, uh, a ball peen now. That'll help me kind of get that radius in there for the handle. Okay, so I heated it up, took it and uh, quenched it in water. So I'm only working the part I want, I guess. Put it up over the anvil here. And okay, so you see there? Heat it up the whole way, I'm gonna dip it. I Whenever I hit it, I don't wanna damage this part up here. I just wanna bend this right here. One thing about uh, about coal is uh, the actual coal that looks like this. The coal is not the part that gets hot. What you have to do is you have to you have to coke that coal up, what it's called, and uh, and that coke is what burns real hot. Uh, coke is just a, a pure form of coal. Um, when you coke it. You uh, you burn out all the impurities in the coal. It's uh, cleans or it burns real clean. There's barely any, there's no smoke to that coal fire. So that's why I got I got my fire up here, and then I got my fire up here, and I got I got green coal on the back. And then what that's doing is the heat from this fire is taking and uh, making that coal in the coke. 
So we'll just take and take and radius those corners a little bit. We'll do a lot of it on the grinder, but so don't pay any attention to the blade because the blade still ain't straight, but that handle. That handle is uh, nice and straight now. Okay, we got that blade hot. And I like to place it on the edge of the anvil and just... So there's our knife now. Okay, guys. There's the finished knife. I uh, got the edge nice and clean. You know, took it down to a beveled edge. Uh, cleaned up the uh, the handle. Now, if you see here, you notice you got to I gotta turn that music. On. Sorry for the music, guys, but Jake's listening to music. But uh, on the blade here, I'm gonna go for a mirror finish. So I tried to take all the hammer marks out of it and all that. Um, the the cleaner it is whenever you quench it, the easier it is to uh, clean up afterwards. But there and on the top, I took and made a uh, took and made a a pattern here at the file, just a round file. And I I kind of like that pattern. So plus it, it it'll give you something to hold to whenever you're you know you got your hands on it. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to heat this blade up just about right here, just where the cutting edge is going to be. We're going to heat that up until it's, or just, we're going to, now what we're going to do is we're going to heat this blade up to where just this, just the cutting edge part is, uh, is at critical temperature and that's whenever, uh, whenever it goes non-magnetic. And then what we'll do is I got, it's just motor, used motor oil here, uh, that's what I quench it in. Um, the one thing that you have to do whenever it's cold out is you have to preheat your oil. Uh, if you don't preheat your oil, you're more prone to uh, warping the blade and getting cracks in the uh, blade as well. So I got a railroad spike in the fire. Just get it red hot, toss it in there, let it get warm. The oil only needs to be about 110, 120 degrees, um, but it's like 30 degrees out right now. So. We'll, uh, we'll get the oil heated up and uh, we'll quench this thing and then uh, pretty much the only thing to do after that is uh, polish the blade and uh, put the handle on it and uh, put an edge on it and uh, I mean hard parts pretty much over now so I got a magnet here on my forge you can see everything sticks to it. I use that magnet for uh, to check to see if I'll take it and stick the, uh, stick the edge on it and uh, that's how I check to see if it's up to critical temperature or not. So, another thing is this isn't what you're supposed to do but uh, I've heard out there from a lot of blade makers that you always always quench your knife in a north to south orientation makes it so it doesn't warp or anything like that. It's just, I guess it's an old wives tale if you want to call it that, but they were superstition. But uh, um, I still quench it north to south. All right, so we got our oil heated up nice and warm. I can feel it. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna heat this edge up now. out, not magnetic, we're just going to dip the cutting edge. We'll leave that in there for, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds, something like that. Just enough to let it cool down a little bit. Get a good, get a good quench on it. There you go, there's a quenched one. Now what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll let it air cool. We'll let it air cool. And uh, 
we'll start polishing the blade so I'll take you guys along for that all right guys there it is after uh, after uh, polishing the blade I mean you can you can see me in it I mean it's, it's not the best it could be but I mean the, I don't do the handle or anything I mean the handles the handles gonna be covered up with wood anyway so so there's that and all I do there is I take uh, I do 40, 80, uh, 120, um, 220, then uh, I believe it's 3, 320 or 360, um, 320, uh, that's 600 and 800, and uh, that's all sandpaper. The 600 and 800 I do a dry, and then I do the same grit wet, uh, and I do that, and whenever you do this, you always want to go in one direction so you can keep all your all your sanding lines in one direction so what I do is I lock it in the vise and uh, I just sit here and go one way one way one way then I'll flip it over do the same on the side, back side I do the same on the top for these grooves here I just uh, I take the same round file I used and uh, cover them up with uh, sandpaper and do it that way so we're gonna put a handle on it now and uh, she'll be done alright guys uh, here's the knife with the handles um, I use two part epoxy to uh, to glue the handles to the blade um, or to the handle I mean um, I also use rivets they're just brass brass rivets I'll put those through there you can see the two holes I got um and that's how you do it so it's five minute epoxy i usually let it sit for a couple hours let it get hard and uh i'll shape the handle and it'll be a done knife all right guys we got the uh we got the finished knife here uh put the handle on it um I just use two part epoxy um, so put the handle on it uh, let it dry ground the handle down sanded it to uh, the way I like the feel of it and uh, I put a coat of uh, boiled linseed oil on it so that there's a, a finished knife so that's one of the knives uh, this is another another style of knife I've made um, this is out of a uh, 1070 steel as well. Um, it just has a, a pine handle on it. Um, I don't know. I just whatever wood I got laying around is whatever I put on the handle. So this is another style of knife. I got my mark. I got my mark in this one. Uh, the same same uh, grinding on the top as this other one. So we got those ones, and then this one. This one, I uh, my brother made a sheath for it, and uh, this knife is actually a Damascus knife. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Damascus, but uh, Damascus is layered steel, um, where you can actually see the, the layers of steel in it. This is actually a cable Damascus out of a, or the cable was from a, uh, just a wire, a wire rope cable, but... Uh, I have it etched, um, it needs to be etched a little bit more, but uh, if I get it close to the camera there, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but uh, you can actually see see the cable lines in there. So those are, those are some of the knives that I've made. Um, if you guys like the video about you know knife making or you know want to see some blacksmithing stuff, just uh, let me know. I mean, I love doing it. I do it almost every weekend, so it wouldn't be too hard to hard to make a video on blacksmithing, but uh, or knife making, whatever. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, you know maybe buying a knife or you know want me to you know make you a knife of your design or anything like that, I mean. I can do that too, so 
you know if you guys want just send me a message and uh you know we can we can talk about it so there you go that's how that's how you make a knife the blacksmith way so thanks for watching guys